Good afternoon, Church of the Living God. Hi. <laughs> Brethren, do pray for one another. Beg your pardon. <laughs> do pray for one another. Um, some prayer requests here of the Church of the Living God. Please, brethren, keep our brother and sister Ryan and Melissa in your prayers. Pray as the Lord would guide you in prayer for them. Um, we all need prayer, but uh, our brother and sister Ryan and Melissa, they really need our prayers right now. Um, we all need prayer every day, right? And also, too, brethren... Um, a dear brother, um, Brother Jeff, um, please keep him in your prayers as well, that the Lord may lead him and guide him and provide for him. And also for our, our brother, our, our dear friend, Brother Alexander, uh, that the Lord will reveal his will unto him. Please. Please. And... Um, Oh, there are so many others, so many others. Um, Thursday, this past Thursday, I spent a majority of that day just going through <laughs> all the emails. Um, for, for someone who is on YouTube who has a very small presence whatsoever, um, yeah, yeah, but um, please, brethren, please. Pray for one another. Please pray for one another. It's very important, especially at this hour. Okay? Okay? So, with that said, it's your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. <clears throat> I want to talk with you a little bit about liberty. Liberty. Now, in this video, we could very easily, if we wanted to, go through the scriptures and be very tedious and meticulous about what specific things constitute liberty within the Church of the Living God? Um, that can be done. We can do that. Others have done that. But to be honest with you, it's the liberty that you and I as the Church of the Living God have in Christ is a little bit more simpler than what though some who are not of the Church of the Living God will make it out to be. Okay? So, with that hanging in the air, Luke chapter 6, verses 46 onto the close of the chapter. Please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. Word by word, verse by verse, okay? And I'm going to address you as though you are, okay? Let's go. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 onto the close of the chapter. Look in the scriptures. Don't look at me. Right away. Right away. When it comes to when people want to debate about what is permissible as liberty for us as the Church of the Living God, some will say like, well, um, what is sin unto one is not sin unto another. Uh, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Who wrote the scriptures? Who wrote the scriptures? Man wrote the scriptures. God used man's hand. Yes, but who is the author of the scriptures? Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, 
the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. The Lord wrote the scriptures. Okay? You have to rightly divide the scriptures. You know, you do. Because the whole book is written for you, but the whole book is not written to you. Okay? We are in the dispensation known as the time of the Gentiles. Okay? This is a different dispensation. We are not under the law. Okay? But, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Both the occurrence in that uh, passage right there are lowercase r. Put two and two together and come up with four, not 36. Okay? But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great okay now again doctrinally our lord had yet to die bury and raise again the third day according to the scriptures yes yes and today, when you come to the Lord broken and contrite, and out of the fear of the Lord, you call upon Him for His mercy and beg Him for His forgiveness, coming to Him broken and contrite, as the Scriptures tell us to, okay? The Lord save you, okay? And you are sealed until the day of redemption. You have the Lord living within you, okay? And He's going to tell you what to do okay now today in this dispensation if you are of the church of the living god saved sealed born again okay converted um you're going to go to heaven you cannot undo the seal which is the lord himself living within you until the redemption of the purchased possession okay you can you're not going to unseal yourself you cannot become unsaved in this dispensation, this dispensation of the time of the Gentiles, okay? And when the Lord seals you with himself, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, become, all, behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, okay? So, he's going to guide you. It's like, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And you find out what is permissible, what our Lord would have you to do. How? By your feelings? No, by the scriptures. Okay? By the scriptures. Relative as far as, well, for you this is sin, but for me is not. it's not sin. No, 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 Okay, go to Romans chapter 16, okay? Romans chapter 16. This thing about liberty for us as the Church of the Living God is a little bit more simpler than what some want to make it out to be, okay? Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Okay? Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Belly. Meat for the belly and the belly for meats. We're going to look at that here a little later. But the belly. 
The belly is part of the body. And the belly is nothing but flesh, isn't it? Our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in his resurrected form, when he was amongst the disciples, the Jewish disciples, he ate a honeycomb and par a piece of a broiled fish, okay? He did that for his reasons, but the point is, um, he wasn't eating because he was hungry. He ate because he just wanted to, okay? So, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own flesh, their own appetite, but they want. And by good words and fair, beautiful, attractive speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For the simple, check this out, now pay attention. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Again, the Lord doth not save you to let you go around living according to your own desire and not being obedient unto the scriptures that he has written for us and for the doctrines for us today in this dispensation. That's ludicrous. That's what easy believism teaches you. They want you to have peace with your sin. Okay? Let's continue. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. Now pay attention. But yet I would have you wise, 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 wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is what? You ought to know this by now. Job 28, 28. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna finish that for you. you. You ought to know this by now. If you are a babe, Look up Job 28, 28. There's your answer. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom, wise, okay? You can figure that one out, okay? But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. What is good? God. There is none good but one. That is who? God. Who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God? Our Father. Spirits of the body, okay? And... Simple, don't look at me, simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Submit yourself first unto the Lord. Unless you submit yourself unto the Lord, you there is no chance for you to resist the devil. Okay, that's in the book of James. You go find that, okay? Submit yourself unto the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, okay? It begins with submission. Okay, people like to make this big ado about what they call lordship salvation, and they they attribute lordship salvation in, to a myriad of silly things. Okay, I'm going to be a little blunt with y'all. Okay, if you are of the Church of the Living God, saved, born again, converted, sealed until the day of redemption, the the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He, he is your Lord. Okay? <laughs> he is your Lord. And for those of you lost people, He is your King. He is your God, whether you like it or not. You don't serve Him. No, you don't. But guess what? He is God. You're going to give an account to Him at the great white throne of judgment. Unless... He save you, and you become part of his body, okay? But see, Jesus Christ is your Lord. If you are of the church of the living God, he is your God. He is your king, okay? He is your Lord. He's going to tell you what to do, okay? We understand that, right? Okay? 
Look at verse 19 again. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, fearing the Lord, okay, and simple concerning evil. Okay? And go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Not Mark. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 on to verse 18. Behold. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And the sheep hear the, uh, the voice of the shepherd. Who is our shepherd? But, you ought to know that. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them, and the Gentiles, for a testimony against them. Okay? We are supposed to be wise as concerning that which is good, and simple concerning evil. If something is contrary to the scriptures, guess what? It's evil. Okay? The things of the world that the world produces and gives on to people to take them away from the Lord, guess what? That's evil. Okay? And you also got to remember Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. One verse. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, Catholics, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Okay? Philosophy. Here's, here's the thing. I'll give you an example. There are those out there who will say, God knows my heart. Okay? And when you, when you stop and think about that, okay, it's one of those that are like, uh, well, yeah, duh, no kidding, genius. Yes, God knows your heart. God knows everyone's heart. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes. God knows everyone's heart. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Okay? We are going through this again, brethren. Beg your pardon. We are going to be reading Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? Yes, God knows your heart. God knows everybody's heart. <laughs> God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah, genius. Bravo. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 1 on verse 10. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart. <laughs> and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. Groves are, are synonymous also with trees and stuff like that. Just remember. Okay? O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage, which I gave thee. 
and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord, maketh flesh his arm. Beware, lest you be spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. Making flesh your arm. Okay? For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall, see, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. <laughs> Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And if we, and if we go to Genesis chapter 6, one verse, Genesis chapter 6, verse 50, oh, what is that? I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now there are those out there who like to have this evolutionary mindset and say that we have gotten better. That Well, that was way back then before the Lord destroyed the earth. Man's hearts are now a little bit... Yeah, they're different in that they get worse. See, God knows your heart. God knows everybody's heart. Yes, He does. The knowing, though of the church of the living God is through a relationship. God knows all people's hearts. Every single one. Okay? Bravo. State the obvious there. Yes, yes. Okay? But is your heart his? A broken heart, a contrite spirit, a heart that is broken is made pure by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? A pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is a broken and contrite heart. Okay? And the knowing is through a relationship, not a head knowledge, which so many have. So many have the knowledge up here, but do not have the broken heart. And when people, in my personal experience, okay? My per it might be different for you, but in my personal experience, every single time, without exception, every single time when I have heard someone say, well, God knows my heart, it always is because they have done something that that individual knows is contrary to the scripture or to justify their actions. To kind of be like, well, it's the woman that thou gavest to me. To blame something else, okay? It's usually after someone uh, curses, behaves foolishly as the world, acts as if they are a devil, but yet they want to defend and justify themselves by saying, well, God knows my heart. Immediately after what they, have, what they know and that you know that they have done is sinful and evil and wicked, but yet God knows my heart. See, it's a defensive move, okay? And 
personally, personally, with my dealings with persons, spirits, own body, okay? Someone of the church of the living God, someone who is truly saved, born again, converted, when you mess up and sin, okay, you, you might be a little defensive at first, but see, God going to whoop you, see. You're going to get chastisement, and he's going to bust you down, okay? You're not going to justify your sin, okay? Well, God knows my heart. Someone living in sin. Well, God knows my heart. But yet you're living in sin. See, it's, it's a defensive move. Okay? And I have not come across someone who I know is up to church of the living God who has to resort to saying, God knows my heart. In my personal experience, every single time, everyone who resorts to, well, God knows my heart, they're saying that to justify themselves and to defend that, well, I'm saved even though I acted like a devil. Okay? Those of the Church of the Living God that I have encountered don't resort to that. That's usually what I've experienced turns out to be the defenses of a infiltrating devil. Remember, God knows your heart. Yeah, genius. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we went through all that, okay, for this purpose. Very similar fashion, we can liken the, the, the thing of ish, the issue of liberty with those who are wanting to justify what God hates in their lives. Perfect example. And this is a perfect example. Video games. Well, we have liberty to do these kinds of things so long as we don't go to the bad video games right we are to be wise concerning that which is good and simple concerning evil okay well it's a, it's a liberty thing contemporary Christian music yeah I, I, I think perhaps maybe no well, you know, some of it's good. It's a liberty thing. We have the liberty. Hey, you don't like it? That's fine. But, hey, I have the liberty to do this thing. In my experience, again, and I have only been saved 13 years. That's it. When those who want to go to, well, it's liberty. It's a thing of, of liberty. Uh, what are they trying to defend with them going to liberty? And they get real technical about what constitutes liberty of the church of the living God. They really do well. Okay, it's, it's a video game, but there's no violence. There's no this. There's no that. So then, ye hath God said, spoiling you through philosophy and vain deceit. Come on, people. Come on, people. Christian contemporary music. Rock and roll. Which is fornication. Rock and roll. Okay? And modern, and rock and roll, heavy metal, death metal, you know, with the... That kind of beats, you know, which are faster than your heart, that kind of stuff. Okay? That's, that's derived from voodoo. Okay, and being a former drummer myself, I know very well that when you get on the drums and you start, that's faster than your heartbeat. You magnify that with the big bass drums, you know, that elevates your flesh. But see, we have, deliberate, we have liberty, don't we? Hmm. Liberty. Again, those whom I've encountered personally um, who have taken the liberty exit usually do such to defend something that they know God hates. Okay? 
Turn now in your authorized version to the, of the scriptures to Leviticus 25. Like I said, I'm going to approach this a little differently than probably a lot of you have already been expecting. Um, the thing of our liberty as the church of the living God, brethren, is a little bit more simpler than those who are saying they are and are not make it out to be. Okay? Okay? Go to Leviticus chapter 25. Let's look at the very first appearance of the word liberty. Okay? Liberty. Um, a little context here. Leviticus chapter 25. We will begin at verse 8. And we will end at verse 10. This is the very first appearance of the word liberty. Liberty. The word liberty, by the way, appears in the authorized version of the scriptures 25 times. Eight times within the Old Testament, technically nine because it appears once in Luke chapter 4, which is technically, doctrinally still under the old, uh, still under the law. So, okay, but eight times in the Old Testament and 17 times in the New Testament. Okay, and very interesting to note Liberty does not appear at all within the book of Revelation. Hmm, very interesting. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 on to verse 10. Come on. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Big five, brother. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of, in the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Here it is. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year. Fiftieth year. Five, fiftieth, fifty, Pentecost. Okay? And proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now, note that first appearance of the word liberty. And proclaim liberty. Proclaim liberty. Hold your place here and go to Genesis chapter 2. Chapter 2. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? Okay? Genesis chapter 2. Oh, uh, let's begin. Hmm. Verses six, uh, 15 on to verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the, into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Look at verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. He commanded. Okay? Note two things. The Lord and commanded. Saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. This, dear friend, is the very first appearance of the derivative of the word free and all its expressions. Uh, the word free and uh, the derivatives thereof appear 96 times within the authorized version of the scripture. This is the very first appearance, okay? Why doesn't it say liberty? 
things that are different are not the same. The Lord God commanded the man, commanded, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. The Lord God commanded the man, Adam, Anything you want, go ahead, eat of it. Freely eat. But, see the condition. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So what verses 16 and 17 imply unto us, already at the very beginning, Genesis beginning, is that God commanded the man, God commanded the man and gave him liberty to eat as he would. It came from the Lord. Okay? But there was a condition not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there was a stipulation there. You can go ahead and eat freely, but don't eat this one. So see, there was something that our Lord put on man not to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Wise what's concerning good and simple concerning evil. Simple concerning evil. Whatever in the garden you may freely eat. But don't eat that. God said don't eat that. Okay. So that's simple. God hath said don't do that. You can go ahead and eat freely of whatever you want in the garden. But don't eat that one. Simple. Isn't it? What happened? <laughs> what happened? We all know what happened. Don't we? Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent, and the serpent was the devil, Satan, you know, Lucifer, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And we'll leave it at that. Yea, hath God said. What God calls evil is quite simple. And when you go back to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10, okay? And ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Now, when you look at verse 1 in Leviticus chapter 25, what does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai. Verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath on to the Lord. So the Lord spoke unto Moses, and Moses gave this unto the children of Israel, and the children of Israel were um, to proclaim liberty. So liberty is something that is proclaimed, we see in the first reference. Okay? Liberty is something that is given. And within that liberty, okay, there is a freedom, okay? Things that are different are not the same. Liberty is something that is given, proclaimed, which is given, okay? Now, go to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. You know, simple people. Simple brethren. Again, the Lord calls you or saves you and calls you to be holy. Not better than thou, but separate. Does the Lord save you to keep you in the mess that he saved you from? That, that's pretty simple, isn't it? But see, you got people coming in with philosophy nitpicking, doting about questions and strifes of words. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 on to verse 3. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Okay? And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Putting ashes on someone was a sign of mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Now, as most of you know, go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. See, when our Lord came first... He came as the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Okay? When he come back with us, his body, the church, um, he's going to be as the Lion of the tribe. He's going to be the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? So, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 21. Our Lord speaking. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's read verse 16 on to verse 21. Luke 4, verse 16 on to verse 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, beg your pardon. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty. Them that are bruised. Bruised by who? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Notice he didn't mention about the stuff of judgment. Because he came first as the Lamb to offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. The Hebrews. To the Jew first, okay? And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister. And sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So to proclaim liberty, our Lord Jesus Christ came what? Claim liberty. Liberty to live in, freely in your sin. Liberty to be saved, but yet have no change and to be exactly as the world. To enjoy the things of the world and to justify your sins, things that God hates with God knows my heart, or oh it's just a it's a liberty thing. Really? Really. Go to Romans chapter six. Now uh, there is a expository video on Romans chapter six on this channel. Uh, go ahead and search for it. But we are going to go to Romans chapter 6. If my fingers will get there. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 14. Okay. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold. Things have become new. Okay. What shall, uh, 
Romans chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So you have the liberty to choose whether to obey the Lord. He doesn't force you. Okay? He does not force you. But the liberty that our Lord has given us, that liberty is what? What is that liberty that he has given us? Let's read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now these guys who want to justify their sins said should. Should. Yes, it does say should. And yes, our Lord doesn't force these things upon you. But if you are truly saved, born again of the church of the living God, and you decide to continue in that, remember, our Lord ain't going to force it upon you. But your life is going to be miserable. You're going to be nothing. You're not going to do nothing. You're not going to go anywhere. Your fruit is going to be putrid, rank, stinking. Okay? You're just, he's going to, you lose your testimony, you can lose your health, lose your life, bring shame upon the Lord. But God knows your heart, right? Yeah, God gave you uh, through liberty to live as the world and justify, well, maybe, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't be doing this, but is this what constitutes? Come on, people. Be simple. Concerning evil, it's, we are to be simple about it. It's a, it's a black and white issue, brethren. It's There's no gray area. And see, these people want to bring in the gray. Yea, hath God said? I, it, you don't need to be that specific about it. It's simple. God says his evil is evil. And when someone tries to meticulously pick everything about it, you need to be very cautious about those people. First thing you ought to ask, and bluntly, uh, is what, what are you trying to hide, man? Oh, I'm not trying to hide anything. God knows my heart. And they rattle off this, 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 and this. It's like, you're justifying it. You want to justify your sin. Yeah. I know of people, brethren, who have done sin and who have uh, continued in their sin? You confront them on them on it about in in love. They don't make excuses. Who makes excuses, people? Lost people. Do. Lost people make excuses. Lost people will look for every nook and cranny to try to justify themselves, their sins. Those of us of the Church of the Living God, born again, saved, converted. <laughs> if I justify myself, my own mouth will condemn me. My lips will prove me perverse. That was Brad Eyes from the book of Job. Go find that, okay? Now let's continue. For if, verse 5 in Romans chapter 6, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body <laughs> of sin might be destroyed. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? <laughs> the flesh is sinful, people, okay? <laughs> that henceforth we should not 
serve sin. Serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Freed from sin. How are we freed from sin? Saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You have the Lord living within you who is going to tell you through the scriptures. That, don't, don't touch that. Don't eat that. Don't look at that. Don't listen to that. You know that guy that you're hanging out with? He, he's going to do you a lot of... He's going to cause you a whole lot of problems. Get away from him. Okay? Okay? See, we're dead to the world. And we have the Lord. Before you, the Lord saved you, you were of the world. Satan is your father. Okay? And you do not have that which is good. And there is none good but one that is God dwelling within you. Hence, hence, Verse 8, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, Catholic. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Obey it in the lusts thereof. Okay? Servants, not slaves. Free will. Free will. Okay? Again, you as the church of the living God, you and I, we can commit any of the most vile, wicked, perverse, abhorrent of sins that these professing Christians and openly, openly lost people can commit. Yes, we can. See, though, the difference is we have the Lord within us who will chasten us severely. Okay. Give you an example. You give yourself over to the music you used to listen to. Just one song, right? That affects you, it stays in your head. It won't leave your head sometimes. Consequence of your action. See, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost, um, you're none of His. And what you do trying to put on a facade that you are of the church of the living God is all done through the flesh. Let's continue. Neither yield, oh, verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because with the temptation, with every temptation, God will make a way of escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You go find that, okay? With the temptation. God will make a way of escape. you got to look for that way of escape. 
Usually it's something very simple as reciting a hymn. Sometimes it's simply turning your back on said situation and literally bolting, running away from it. God will make a way of escape that ye may endure, bear that temptation. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Under grace. Now go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Verses 12 on to verse 14. Okay? Matthew chapter 15, verses 12 on to verse 15. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Because the Pharisees were covetous. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Every root that my heavenly Father hath not planted. Every, excuse me, every plant, <laughs> I'm sorry, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now, and when you go back to Romans chapter 6, verse 5, for if, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, if, conditional clause, we shall be, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Planted. Planted. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. See, we have the church of the living God. We are still, our spirit and soul are still within the skin suit, the flesh. And the spirit warreth against the flesh. Okay, that's what Romans chapter 7 is about. Okay, Paul, our apostle, his struggle with the, between spirit and flesh. Okay, that's what Romans 7 is about. Okay, we are going to have a never-ending daily War and battle with our flesh. Okay? Remember that. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verses 33 on to verse 37. John chapter 8. Verses 33 on to verse 37. Uh, 47. Excuse me. Right? They answered him, meaning the Pharisees, and those that believed on him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the, what? Servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. And your temple today, the temple of God, is your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. See, for today, in this dispensation, not a building, okay? If the son, therefore, shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Aha. Clue. Clue. If ye have been planted in the likeness of his death, See, a death has to take place. 
you have to die to yourself, your self-righteousness, okay? Being born again, that old man dies. It, he has re Sin has been where? Relegated to the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh, meaning while you and I, Church of the Living God, are on this earth, our spirit and soul are housed within a skin suit. Okay? We're going to sin. But see, through that circumcision made with our hands, our Lord Jesus Christ living within us, we have Him telling us, don't do this, don't do that. Because His Word is in us. Himself. And we have the Scriptures. And He will teach us. His word. He will guide us into all truth. Remember. One God cons consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Not three divine persons that make one God. That's devilish. But, okay, looking at John 8 uh, again, verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. God knows my heart. After they just spake like a devil with smooth speeches in the facade, but away from that facade, they're full of dead men's bones and looking to justify themselves. When you as the church of the living God encounter such a fellow, it's like, you're, how can you be, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he sure does, genius. And it doesn't belong to him. Why is that? Because my word hath no place in you. Well, it's not. It's a sin for you to indulge, uh, to engage in video games, Christian music, and stuff like that. But it's not for me. It's relative. No, it's sin. It's sin. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Yea, hath God said. See, when they start, when, when these people who call themselves Christians start getting meticulous, nitpicking about little things, could be very well, babe, yes. We have to, yes, yes. But more often than not, brethren, and like I said, in my personal experience, every single time, the fake! If, if you run into people or someone who's saying, well, God knows my heart, and they're living like a devil, and they go to God knows my heart, I'll... I'll lay you very good odds that person is not of the church of the living God. One out wonderful odds that that person is not saved. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And they were saying that to the father right there. <laughs> Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. Why is that? Because Jesus is the father. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. 
He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. And the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost. Okay, he will not leave you comfortless. Okay, one God, spirit's own body. Okay, so there's no truth in him. Who, what is truth? Who is truth? Of the church, of the, you're of the church of the living God. Guess what? Truth is in you, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why to be wise concerning that which is good, but simple about what is evil. And those who say they are but are not are the ones who are trying to make so complex that which is evil. Yea, hath God said. Like we looked at in Genesis. You, you're, you can eat of the gardens freely. But see that one? Don't touch that one. Go ahead and eat everything over there. Go ahead. But see that one? Don't touch that one. Someone who is nitpicking about what is our liberty? Yea, hath God said. If they're a babe, search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? You search the scriptures. Our Lord will tell you what is good and what is evil. Okay? He'll, he'll show you. But when you have these coadjutor devils whose sole goal is to make you at peace with your sin. Don't, don't nitpick. Don't nitpick. Don't about questions and strifes of words. Yea, hath God said. This thing of, our, of the liberty that we have is very simple. Okay? Very simple. Very simple. And very quickly, um, trying to take things that are pagan and attribute them onto the church of the living God, that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Simple concerning evil, brethren. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not. Because ye are not of God. Now grant, now, again, again, brethren, again, babes, novices, okay? Yes, yes, okay, a babe or novice will have questions about that, but you point them on to the scriptures, not a church building. Okay, you point them on to the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. Okay, search the scriptures daily, people. Okay, to discern what is evil is not that difficult. It really isn't when you search the scriptures. Okay, there are those out there who are evil who are very good at what they do at deception. Sooner or later, they will be made manifest. They always are. Every single time. Okay? Now go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now Philippians. Galatians chapter 5. Now, in the book of Galatians, Paul is addressing those who want to bring those of the church of the living God, comprised of both Jew and Gentile, to bring them under the law, that they have to keep the law of Moses to be saved, stay saved, and so on and so forth. 
for us today in this dispensation, that is not a requirement for us today. Okay? Okay? For our salvation, to be right with God, to be saved, stay saved, what they come up with, these arguments, you do not follow the law. Okay? We are sealed. It's not our salvation. It's not a matter of we staying saved. You come to the Lord on His on His terms. You ask Him for His forgiveness. Out of the fear of the Lord, He saved you. You're sealed. Okay? You don't have to do anything to stay saved because it's not your salvation. You're sealed. You're going to heaven. Whether you like that or not. But you're standing with our Lord. I, can't, I, I, can, I can't get that out of my head. And I don't want you to either. Okay? It's not about a, a thing of rewards, beloved, that when you get, in, uh, get to the judgment seat of Christ that you're going to be boasting. No, 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 no. 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 I don't want, my, I don't want our Lord to look at me with shame. I'm just like, get, get in there. I don't even want to look at you. And how many are going to want to settle for just that? Makes no sense to me. But we have to remember that. But this does go a little bit deeper than just the single application onto those who want to bring you under the law. Three. Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. See, things that are different are not the same. Liberty is something that is given. And what is given from that liberty? Freedom from what? Freedom from what? Sin. That does not mean that we don't sin anymore. Okay, that's nonsense. Okay? That's nonsense. No. But to be shackled by that sin. We have the Lord within us. Okay? You're going to sin. Because sin has, sin has been condemned into the flesh. You're going to sin. Okay? The Lord's not holding a gun at your head. Remember that. Always remember that. You're going to pay a heavy price for your sin. And you do. Okay? But we are not as the lost or those who profess that they are saved, okay? We're not, no, no. They don't have the Lord within them, okay? So, stand fast in the liberty which Christ, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Talking about specifically the law, but is not sin a yoke of bondage upon you? Think about it. Video games. Perfect example. How much time do you waste sitting there? And then the next thing you know, you're playing one of these devilish video games. Or an innocent one like chess, right? Give me a break. How much time of your life are you wasting sitting there? And the next thing you know, it's like, wow, five hours have gone by already. Yoke of bondage, people. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, the law, carnal ordinances, law, a tribute unto flesh, Ye are fallen from grace. So if you're trying to justify yourselves by means of fleshly things, by the way. Mm. For we through the spirits, God bless, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? 
Jesuit coadjutors, most likely. And they sound so pious and righteous, don't they? Yeah. All full of, yea, hath God said. This persuasion... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. And look at that next verse. Don't look at me. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little sin leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded but that but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preached, if I yet preached circumcision, excuse me, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The offense of the cross. The offense. The cross is offensive. See, because the cross is a death. And when you as the church of the living God, when you come to our Lord Jesus Christ, God's love is at Calvary, the cross, where he died, buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on that cross. And it is the blood, not the flesh, the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. God's perfect, pure blood. Okay? It has nothing to do with you. See? Cross is offensive because that takes away everything that you can do yourself. See, the catch is you have to be broken of that. That's his requirement. Brokenness and contrition. You come into, you try to come to the cross full of yourself, in your flesh. Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah. I would they were cut off, which, uh, I would they were cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called on to liberty. Only Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Hold your place here and go to Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren unawares, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage see these infiltrators they come in to spy out what our liberty our liberty which is a gift we have been called on to liberty the proclamation Christ had came to proclaim liberty in himself, see. And these people come in and they want to spy that out. See, the liberty we have is that we're not hold, held by bondage to sin. Be why? Because we have the Lord living within us who's going to tell us that's evil, that's wicked, don't do it. Turn from it. But see, those who do not have the Lord, they don't have, obviously, they don't have the Lord telling them that that's evil. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? But it's actually evil. So all they have is their flesh. <laughs> and the devil is nothing but about the flesh. See. And they spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. So they come in to see that liberty, okay, that our Lord has given to us. So they can come in and pervert it. 
twist it. With all their yea hath God said, you can live just like the world. You should have a changed life. You're still saved. You should. You see? This thing of liberty, dear brethren, is actually a little bit more simpler than a lot of people out there who say they are and are not want it to be. Verse 5. Whom we gave place by subjection? No! Not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And also, go to verses 18 on to verse 21 in chapter 2. Okay? Verses 18 on to verse 21. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, by something that you do in the flesh, then Christ is dead in vain. Frustrate the grace of God. By saying under liberty, you have liberty to live as the world and engage in things because, hey, it's not sin unto you. What mad? That's madness. That's madness, dear brethren. That is pure madness. Go back to uh, Galatians chapter five, picking up at verse fourteen. Okay. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts, the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Adultery. Being with someone other than your spouse. Fornication. Being with someone outside of wedlock. Uncleanness. Filthiness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcrafts. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Oh, incidentally... I am not a Denlingerite. I am prettier than this man. <laughs> Wrath, strife, sedition, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before and tell you before as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. 
meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, praises of men, provoking one another, envy one another. So the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. How do you walk in the Spirit? Number one, you search the Scriptures daily, see whether these things are so, whether these things be so, and when the Lord speaks to you through the Scripture, put something into your heart. You search the Scripture. Uh, you do what He tells you to do. There, hence, walking in the Spirit. But see, when you decide to quench the Spirit and decide to walk after the flesh, play a little video game, listen to your uh, worldly uh, contemporary Christian music, Decide to speak in profanity, be deceitful, deceptive, and then God knows my heart. Well, it's a liberty thing. Give me a break, people. Give me a break. Now go back to Romans chapter 6. Well, go back to Romans chapter 6. Picking up at verses 15 on the close of the chapter. Okay? Now, from verses 1 on to verse 14... Someone who is newly saved, born again, converted. Okay? Walk in the uh, spirit, not the flesh. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Okay? Now, verses 15 on to verse 23 deal specifically with those who are want, want not to give up their sin, but say, hey, God's grace covers everything. So, it's okay for you, according to these devils. It's okay for you to live as a lost devil, all the while professing to be a Christian, not of the Church of the Living God, by the way. Um, so go ahead. Sin. Because the more you sin, God's grace will abound for you, right? Some nonsense like that. Don't worry about it. God's grace covers everything. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? God forbid. All you really need to do when this issue of liberty comes up, brethren, come to Romans chapter 6. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And remember, what did Satan say unto Eve? Thou shalt not surely die, but your eyes will be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. No, you shall not, you shall not surely die. But they did. But they did. Okay? <laughs> they certainly did. Hey, hold your place here and go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 17. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Good works. Not to be saved or stay saved. That is a result of the Lord dwelling within you. 
Be zealous of good works, okay? Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. The punishment of evildoers. What is evil? Remember, you are to be simple concerning what is evil. You are to be simple concerning what is evil. If God says it's evil, then guess what? It's evil. But when you got a government saying evil is good and good is evil, which one do you choose? Let's see. The governments of today, which are run by the Jesuit order, are saying good is evil and evil is good. But God says something differently, doesn't he? See, people will come to stuff like that, and also in the book of Romans, chapter 13, where um, Paul says, you know, to be submissive onto, onto the government. But remember, the government is there for the punishment of those who do evil. What is evil? Something that is contrary to the scripture. Okay? You do what is contrary to the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, guess what? You're doing evil. Hence, they're there to punish you. But if you do good, and there is none good but who? God. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What are they going to do when you're doing that which is good? Put you in the Nazi concentration camps because you will not subject yourself unto the steel of the Jesuit poniard, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's continue. Uh, verse 15 for so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance not knowing better of foolish those who say in their heart there is no God living as if there is no God men as free and not using your liberty liberty proclaiming liberty our Lord came to set at liberty. Liberty is something that is given to us from the Lord. Those who are lost, okay, those who are lost and these coadjutors, okay, they do not have that liberty given to them of Christ, which is the Lord within you. And the Lord within you is going to, through the scriptures, teach you how to live. As free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, doing something that is evil. Contempt. For example, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. How, using uh, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Well, I have liberty to go ahead and live as the world because God's grace covers it all. Might be a sin to you, but it's not a sin unto me. You're using God's liberty that he has given you to set you free from sin as a cloak of maliciousness. Very similar to the way as someone who is a coadjutor and is as profane as anything and as dirty and filthy as a menstrual cloth. But yet God knows your heart. See, those who are fake will use God knows my heart and will cling to what is liberty for us as defensive measures have to beware of these people, brethren, who do that. If, if this person is a novice or babe, then in meekness, gentleness, and patience, as the Lord will guide, if he come to you, guide them. 
okay? But if someone is claiming to be a <laughs> Christian for 25 years or something like that, and yet it's kind of, well, God knows my heart, and clings to, well, it's a thing of liberty. You're dealing with a false convert. Betcha. <laughs> Betcha, okay? Okay, now go back to Galatians chapter, uh, or Romans chapter 6. Okay, picking, oh, wait, wait, wait. I had another thing written down here. Okay, 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, we'll come to 2 Peter chapter 2 here in a minute. Okay, continuing at verse 17. In Romans chapter 6. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then what form being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Because sin has been condemned in the flesh. Flesh is sinful. Okay? For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness, unto holiness. And someone who is a coadjutor, a fake, will come to verse 19. Well, see, you should. You don't have to. Who, who makes an argument like that? <laughs> Brethren, who makes an argument like that? Okay? I, I've known of brethren who have sins that they are dealing with. No, brother, you shouldn't. I know. I know. I know. And um, I'm, I'm not going to make an excuse for it. They don't make an excuse for it. Someone who comes to verse 19, it's like, well, you should. Okay? I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded, as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteous uh, servants, I lost my place, to righteousness unto holiness, being separate. Denoting what? Choice. Why, why would someone want to constantly... See, see, it says you have a choice. It's not a requirement. That's, that's devilish. Okay? That wisdom doesn't come from the Lord that is sensual, earthly, devilish. Because remember... Satan is all about this. And his ministers, that's all they're about to. Let's continue. For when, now, and, and look at how Paul addresses this. For when ye were the servants, not slaves, of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You know how Peter said when our Lord's like, in his sarcasm, <laughs> You guys going to go away too? Peter is like, Lord, who should we go to? You, thou hast the words of eternal life. There is no, there's nowhere, there's no hope but the Lord Jesus Christ. See, if you are not of the church of the living God, there's no hope for you. What are you going to choose? You have no choice. You're holding by your sin. But see, the Lord, you come to the Lord broken and contrite and cry out, call upon the name of the Lord for his forgiveness in the fear of the Lord. He saved you. He comes in. And it's like, okay, 
how he is in you, he's going to tell you what to do. Why would you want to reject that? Why would you not want to follow the Lord's guidance? Oh, because it's so hard, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Because straight is the way and narrow. Narrow is the way and straight is the gate that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Broad is the way. Broad is the way. See, brethren, you don't need to nitpick about when it comes to, well, what is our liberty? You don't need to nitpick it. Okay, you really do not. Okay, that, that could be, you know, you can to get very specific. Yes, 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 okay. For babes, and, okay, but you don't need to. It's a little bit more simple than that, okay. We are to cleave to that which is good and abhor that which is evil. It's very simple. Okay? Verse 20 again. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? And if you are not ashamed of the things that you used to do before you were allegedly saved, there's a problem there. There's a problem there. Because if you build again the things that you destroyed, you make yourself a transgressor. You know, going back to your own vomit. You endure for a while until persecution or temptation. And what is the fruit? What is the fruit? What is the fruit that you have? Of giving yourself over to the things of the world. Of, try, of nitpicking these things to death. When it's more simple. What's the fruit of it? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin. That's that liberty. See, because the lost and the fake, they don't have the Lord living within them. But you, the church of the living God, you have the Lord within you. Now, yes, you can quench the spirit and God help you. Okay? Yes, you can. But see, yes, you, you're saved, born again, converted. Sealed. You're sealed. You're going to heaven. But see, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And he that is in you, through the scriptures, is going to tell you, teach you, what to do, how to do, what not to do. And only those who dispute that are not of the church of the living God. The Lord will not keep you ignorant to these things for far too long. Don't forget that, okay? Okay. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Because God doesn't want a robot, Mr. Calvinist. God doesn't want a robot. Ye have your fruit unto holiness, being separate, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hence, that is the liberty. The liberty is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And before you had our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you, There are those out there who can overcome addictions through their own flesh. But they usually trade it off for something else. See. That liber the liberty is Jesus Christ. Okay? 
And because we have him in us, he will guide us. Okay? It's not that difficult, brethren. It's not that difficult at all. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter cha chapter 2. Verses 17 on to verse 19. Those who dispute these things and make a big ado about, well, what is under our liberty? Verses 17 on to verse 19. And I, I, again, I'm not talking about those who are babes who legitimately uh, are, want to know these things, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these deceivers who want to make you comfortable in your sin. And seek to justify wicked things such as video games, contemporary Christian music, trying to, as they say, Christianize holidays derived from Catholicism and paganism. Did the Lord give you liberty? To engage in a pagan holiday called Christmas. Well, it's for you, yea, hath God said. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, full of uh, sound. Um, strut their stuff upon the uh, stage full of sound and fury signifying nothing it's a little bit of Shakespeare to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they allure through the lusts of the flesh ah, you have liberty you can go play your little video games Sure, they're not the violent ones. Don't redeem, you know. Never mind about redeeming the time. Go ahead. It's safe for you. Oh, it's okay. Listen to contemporary Christian music, which is derived from voodoo. Yeah, go right ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because Christ has given you liberty to do so. Uh, they might not like it, but hey, we can agree to disagree. Alluring through the lusts of the flesh. Who does that? Yep, seriously, brother, sister, you run into this stuff? Take a step back. Think. What is? What are they trying? What are these who are bringing up these arguments? What are they trying to accomplish? trying to make you comfortable in sin. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, God's grace covers everything. You don't have to. They allure through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped them who live in error. While they promised them Liberty. <laughs> they themselves are the servants of corruption. Because remember, flesh rots. The flesh, our flesh was made of what? Dirt. It's going to decompose. It's going to rot. Begins in four days. Remember? Uh, the, uh, he was died, buried, uh, died, buried, and rose again the third day. And remember in the book of John where they said it has been fourth, uh, four days and now Lazarus stinketh. And scientifically you look at uh, after three days the body begins to stink. Scripture is scientifically provable and accurate by the way. 
Put that up on your own time. Okay, let's continue. Oh, kind of lost it there. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. Where are we at? Uh, for the same he is brought into bondage. Go back to Romans chapter 6. Go back, please. Romans chapter 6. Verse 15, uh, 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? So you're gonna you're gonna see to just how much you're gonna see try to find in the scriptures just how much worldliness you can get away with, right? Now, as a babe, yeah, you you go through that process, okay. But if you're claiming to be of the Church of the Living God for decades. And you're looking and you're trying to justify worldliness. You, you probably ain't saved. I would, lay, I would lay you great odds that you ain't. Because the longer you go, the harder it gets. It really does. It really does. But as the devil Oscar Wilde said, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. See, that's what these coadjutors are doing, brethren. Okay? It's a little bit more simple. God has not granted you liberty, so in that freedom that his liberty gives you to go live like the world, you're not going to get away from that. And if you try to quench the spirit and be as the world, you're going to pay a heavy price. You really are. Now go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 19 on to verse 26. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 19 on to verse 26. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And if you've got someone telling you, God knows my heart, to, def to justify themselves, that's a defensive measure. Can you show me anywhere in the scripture where a someone says, well, God knows my heart? Yes, it says in the scripture, God knows your hearts. Yes, he does. But see, again, people who say that, say that to defend themselves. And they've been caught. When they do what we as the Church of the Living God know, that someone who is of the Church of the Living God should not. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hold your place here. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Not 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. You are sealed with that holy seal of promise, and no other foundation can any man lay than that is, a, that is laid, Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. 
The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and, and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Gold and silver purified metals that can abide fire. Wood and earth, wood can be burnt up. Earth can be heated in a kiln to be eventually broken as a potter's vessel. You get it? Let's continue. If a man therefore purge himself from these things of the earth, being obedient on what, unto what our Lord says for sanctification, holiness, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts. Hold your place here. Go to Ecclesiastes. Today is the 10th. Did you read Ecclesiastes chapter 10, by the way? Hmm? Are you too busy? Because God knows your heart. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Uh, look here in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Don't look at me. Flee also youthful lusts. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. What did God say about the heart? And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. You need to grow up. Stop making excuses. Stop trying to look for loopholes that don't exist within Scripture to justify your wicked behavior. got to grow up. See, because that's what these devils do. These coadjutors. They make loopholes that are not there. They twist the scripture. Because they're all about the flesh. That's what they do. The children. Wicked devils. Satish. Satish. Children. Children of the devil. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. And isn't it ironic that there are so many... A sister gave me a link about um, how they, are, they say they might have some kind of pill or something for immortality or something. How to stay forever young. And the scriptures say. Childhood and youth are vanity. You know when. Uh, Paul said when I was a child. I thought as a child. I speak as a child. But when I became a man. I put away childish things. Back in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Flee also youthful lusts. And we kind of got a picture of what these youth, youthful lusts are. To walk after your heart and after the sight of your eyes. Fleshly. <laughs> but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 
A pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is one that is uh, broken, contrite, and that fears the Lord. You don't have a pure heart merely because you say you do, dear friend. And those of the church of the living God, those who came to the Lord on His terms, our hearts are pure not of our own, are pure not of our own doing, but because we came to Him on His terms. Hence, He gives us Himself. Again, brethren, this is not that difficult. But see, devils who want to trip us up, especially the babes, especially the young kids. Hey, young man, you watching me? It's not okay for you. You're claiming you're of the church of the living God. It's not okay for you to indulge with video games with your siblings. You are to be an example you are to be holy, separate, other. There is no excuse for it. If you are truly saved, born again of the church of the living God, stop it. Devils look for an excuse. Don't live foolishly. <laughs> but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. And, I, oh, wow. Um, there are those of the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters, who ask, have asked, wow, a lot of questions. Uh, at least I got my work set up for me, right? But um, some of the questions, these are foolish questions. Oh, wow. Wow. We are told to avoid Foolish. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. To be foolish is to live as if there is no God. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Gender strifes. You answer a fool according to his folly? Let's don't answer a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him, foolish. There are some of you out there who have not, I'm not talking to the church of the living God, you devil coadjutors, the, whoever you are. <laughs> I know of a few of you, but there are some of you out there that have asked, sent me uh, emails with some of the most foolish questions. I got better things to do. Okay? Ain't got time for that. And then what happens? You answer a fool according to his folly? Keep coming up with more, 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 more. You answer, you answer one thing about this thing of liberty, these devils keep coming up with more, more, more. Well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Simple. That's something to take note of, brethren. You can answer their question a hundred times. They'll keep coming up with more. It's a trap. Watch out for that. Brother, watch out for that. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Again, gentleness is not talking about wimpiness, like being like it, this little timid. Timid is not meekness, okay? No, what it means is you don't go up to anybody like and try to th throw the entirety of Scripture down their throat at once. You give them morsels, little bits, little bits, okay? You don't over, uh, overload them so they become like a deer in the headlights. You know, just overwhelmed. Little by little. Little pieces. 
I spare you. I've made that mistake before. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. See, when the Lord saves you, you're recovered out of that snare because you have the Lord within you. You are set free. The Lord gives you, uh, the Lord, the Lord in that liberty sets you free from being taken by Satan at his will. See, you're, you're lost and fake. You, you have no hope. You have no hope. You can endure for a while on the works of the flesh, but in the end they're going to avail you nothing. The Lord is the one. He is that liberty. And he will say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, stay away from that, don't eat that. What are you looking at? Okay? You get it? Like I said, this is not that difficult. It's these devils who make it difficult, brethren. Because you've got to remember... You've got to remember, okay? Go to Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, okay? Okay? And the reason why I talk about this is because, okay, you've been warned. You know what's going on out there. If you don't, you're a lost devil, and to be quite blunt with you, you are stupid, okay? If you don't know what's going on, if you don't realize what's going on out there, you're stupid, Get offended. Take offense and a gate. Okay? There, and there are those who want to be willfully ignorant. Okay? There are those out there who are willfully ignorant. They don't want to hear it. Okay? <laughs> you can fix ignorance. You can't fix stupid. But see, we've been warned. And the time is going to come when you are going to have to stand. It's already here. And you need to be prepared. You need to really, you really need to set, be set apart. You're set, you know, set apart, holy. Okay? Because it's way too easy to step back and to give in for comfort's sake when everyone else is doing it. We're supposed to be holy, set apart, separate, other. That's why I harp on this. Because, again, there are those that say they are Christians, which is attributed unto them of the world those of the church of the living God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, other, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Jesus Christ is that liberty. And him being within you. You are freed from sin because he's going to let you know what it is. See, we know what sin is by the law. Okay? By the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? But when he comes into you, it's like, okay, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. See? Yes, yes. See, the law was there to bring us on to Christ. And once you come to Christ on his terms, and he saved you, then sanctification. 
Not returning back to what he called you out of. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that to? Yourself? Beg your pardon, brother. But then, now go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 on to verse 12. 9 on to verse 12. Know ye not that the unrighteous, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate men acting like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, sodomites, neither thieves who go up another way instead of through the door, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Yeah, again, you as the Church of the Living God can do anything that them lost people can do. But what does it say here? Uh, verse 10. Hmm. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Has your sin, are you brought under the power of your sin because you're saying all things are lawful for me? Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Meats, belly, belly, meats, flesh. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Remember, you're likened unto his death and raised that you may live in the likeness of his life. Okay? And our example of that is Paul who struggled with his sin. Maybe Romans 7 sometime. Okay? Yeah. You as the church of the living God can do anything that a lost person can do. Yeah. Yeah, you can. But you're going to pay a very heavy price. It's not worth it. And only a devil are those who are going to come to you. With yea hath God said. Say, well, well, okay, yeah, well, all things are lawful, but you know, what's sin for you is not sin for me. Yeah, okay, we can do, okay, that, that might be evil, but what if we do, you see? That's devil speak. Smooth words, fair speeches. Now go to Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 21 on to verse 23. We started with, um, before we read this, go back to Luke. You know, this is all you basically have to remember when it comes to this. 
about, you know, people making a big thing about, well, it's, it's under liberty. You know, we have the liberty to do thus and thus. And it's, no, no. All you have to remember, brethren, simply, simply, is Luke chapter 6, uh, verse 46. This is all you have to really remember. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 21 on to verse 23. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. See, there's no gray area. It's either or. And all these devils, these easy believism heretics, these people who want to justify themselves, God knows my heart, oh, it's a liberty thing. It's either or. It's simple. It's simple. There's no gray area. There's no option C, people. Come on. Come on. Okay? Okay? Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. But all things edify not. <laughs> edify. Are you being edified when you waste five, six, eight hours of your day playing a video game? Oh, it's chess in a video game. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Shut up! Are you, are you, is that edification? Hmm? You edified putting into your ears worldly music calling itself Christian. Because they say Jesus? Yeah. There's no middle ground, people. That's the thing. There's no middle ground. There is no gray area. Okay? There is no gray area. The, the scriptures are silent on nothing. Okay? They're not. If, I mean, I, I remember uh, those of the MacArthur camp, um, some Johnson guy, Bill, jo Phil or Bill Johnson, one of the two, um, uh, said that there are, there are, are portions in the scriptures where God is silent on certain things. Yea, hath God said? Yea, hath God said? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath not given, hath not saved you, given him, given you of himself, which is liberty. Proclaim. Okay? Hasn't given you liberty that in that freedom that he gives you to go and live as the world. You can do that, yes, yes, you can, but you're gonna pay such a heavy price. And if you, are you really of the church of the living God? If that is your main focus, remember, yes, the spirit wars against the flesh, yes. 
But if that is still your main thing, that is what your main focus is, how to get away with much of the world and yet still call yourself a Christian? There's something wrong there, dear friend. There's something dreadfully wrong. Dreadfully wrong. So. Hopefully, brethren, this helped. Hopefully. Um, you know, I... I, 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 I get a lot of emails and uh, come across quite a few things and um, the, the pattern of those who want to justify their sin is very evident, okay? And someone of the church of the living God who is truly saved, born again, converted, you are of the church of the living God, you're not going to justify your sin. Thank you very much, brethren. And do remember to pray for one another. Do remember to pray for one another. It's very important, especially in these days. Got uh, more videos coming. Um, um, one a day. One a day. <laughs> um, a sister shared with me something that was so, so, wow. Um, that'll be probably next. And uh, I had been given permission to do so. Um, uh, very, very, wow, 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 wow. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I hope this has helped one of you. Like I said, I'm going to get into specifics. Because you really, I mean, you really don't need to. It's a little bit more simple than that. We are not to be as the world. Okay. And why call you him Lord, Lord, and do not the things he says? Very similar to the, uh, the uh, thing of the catching away. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You know, do right. Take his own body out of the way so his own body doesn't go through the wrath of God, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's very simple. Same principle. Why call you him Lord, Lord, and do not the things he says? He says not to do that, but yet you, 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 you're going to try your hardest to find something to get a loophole? I throw not. Come on. Come on. Think about it. All right. That's going to be it. Thank you. Thank you to all you brethren, sisters, for, um, for all that you have done. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. Uh, we need your prayers. We all need our prayers. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. I might not speak with you. Um, you might have given me an email. And I, I got to say this again because, wow. Wow. A lot of emails. Don't think that you are forgotten in prayer. Okay? Brethren, one of the greatest things you can do for a brother, a sister, is pray for them. If you're able, help them. Whatever capacity is it, it is in. Okay? Those who are legitimately struggling, pray for them. There are those I used to uh, talk to regularly, and unfortunately I do not, we don't have correspondence anymore, but... Um, Never forgotten in prayer. So, thank you, brethren. We will see you in the next video.